Everybody, 641. Welcome back to Great Day for this Tuesday. It's the 14th of July. Lou, Jackie, and Jason here being joined by Ron the Car Guy as we are every single week at this time from Westside Auto Pros. And you folks must have been busy little beavers yesterday with the temperatures we had. We were. Jason sent us uh, some, some very warm weather and, and we were. It was a very uh, productive and busy day. So 90% of them were air conditioning related. Um, no, no, really? no. Actually, yesterday the uh, the flavor of the day was uh, tire failure, flat tires, and and blowouts on the interstate. We had uh, we we had more than a dozen calls uh, before lunch. Wow. And this is a common heat issue. <clears throat> well, it, it is, and, and part of it is the um, you know as tires get old and age, or if they're underinflated. Uh, when you drive down the highway or at highway speeds, it builds up heat. Well, now we've got heat from the, the, the highway coming into it and the outside temperature, and, uh, and they, they blow out, they fail. Wow. So, um, and, and I had, I wanted to, to share this. I got, uh, this is kind of cool. It makes you, you know, sometimes you wonder if, if things that you do are effective. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I received this, uh, this neat little card. It's, it's got a tractor with a tire on it, ironically. Uh, and it came from uh, Lori Ludwig, um, who lives in southern Iowa, but, but she had sent this to me in the mail, and it said, uh, Dear Ron, thanks for the car tips you give on great day. My husband told me to check the air pressure on my spare. I have a 2005 Kia Sedona with 200, over 200,000 miles. Hmm. We're pretty sure it's never been checked. When I had my oil changed, I asked him to check the air in the spare. Thanks to you, I feel a lot safer when I drive to Fort Collins, Chicago, and Indianapolis. Wow. The spare had 10 pounds in it. Oh, oh, no. It now has and I, and 40. I that's not good. <laughs> no, no, 10's not the specification for the air spare. But, but, but you know, we, we, we've talked about it, we talk about it, and, and, and like I said, you, you, you assume that uh, people listen and, and, and get something out of this. I mean, I get comments when I'm out and about on the street and stuff, but uh, that card just kind of made me sit back and smile. Mm, that's cause, cool. Yeah, if Lori has a, a, a flat tire on her way to one of her trips now, um, she at least has something reliable to put on there. Now, let right. me ask you this. Does the <clears throat> nitrogen help with that if you do the nitrogen fill? It, well, well, it does. Um, you know, again, as long as there's a, a proper it's properly filled yeah. and nitrogen helps stabilize that a absolutely but the, the key is you don't want to be five or ten pounds low on air in your tires especially on a hot day because it, it uh, when, when that tire rides low on pressure it's kind of squatting down on the pavement and it builds up more heat in it that's what what causes the rubber to fail is the excess heat mm -hmm. so all right. as, so, as just as like you, your pets, bring your tires in to the house where it's air conditioned. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You can't hold your hand on the pavement for 10 seconds, you can't. There you go, okay. there you go. All right, so what are we going to talk about this morning? Well, I, I wanted to uh, discuss a little bit. Um, I've got uh, three of the uh, top misconceptions of the auto repair industry, and, and a lot of this content came from, um, it was actually a, a, a career uh, board or, or job board yeah. and um, they, they were they started out uh, there was some discussion going on about the auto repair industry and jobs in the auto repair industry but it it rolled into to these three misconceptions which really don't have anything to do with a job in the auto repair industry but but they're they're accurate and and so I kind of added to them but uh, the, the first one is uh, misconception is uh, cash is tight so I better save this repair for later or in other words, you know, procrastinating doing a repair on a car. And, and one of the common causes uh, of like a check engine light on a vehicle uh, is an oxygen sensor uh, malfunction. And, and typically, depending on the vehicle, the, the oxygen sensor will cost two to $300 to, to repair uh, on a car. And, and oftentimes the, the car doesn't run that noticeably bad, so people may elect to defer repairing that. And, and the downside is uh, when the sensors don't communicate pop properly, the, the vehicle will oftentimes uh, introduce too much fuel into the engine and it ruins the catalytic converter in a short period of time. And if you have a catalytic converter fail on your car, um, any more of those are two thousand plus dollars. Wow. Okay, so now you have the sensor Jeez. and the catalytic converter. Yeah, you've still got the original repair, right. and and you just increase the the cost of fixing it almost tenfold. And 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 catalytic converters are not as forgiving as they used to be. We we've had we had two cars in last week that um, started out with a misfire due to spark plugs, mm -hmm. and, and the people delayed getting them in to get them fixed. And by the time they came to us, the the inside of the catalytic converter had melted down. So now they needed spark plugs plus another expensive component. So 
um, it, it's best to, unless you're professionally advised, hey, this can wait, mm -hmm. or you've got a little more time before you need to replace this, that shouldn't be a judgment call that you make on your own. Don't ignore the warning <clears throat> signs. Exactly, exactly. Uh, number two, uh, I can just call the auto shop and get an estimate on the phone. Um, and any more repairs are complicated. Uh, mechanics don't have psychic powers. Uh, every car is built uh, differently. They don't all have the exact same parts. The parts aren't in the exact same location. And, and there's really no way to determine uh, how much a repair might cost without somebody, you know, looking at the vehicle or analyzing it. Right. How and often do people call you and try to mimic what their car, the car sounds they're making? Right the, now? the sounds on the phone. Yeah. Uh, what we're seeing, <clears throat> seeing more of now, is they'll record it on their phone and then play oh. it back for you. And then, like, this is what it sounds. We, like. We've had people email us the 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 audio off their phone or, or text us the audio <laughs> off their phone this is the noise my car is making and it actually is very helpful that would be because oh, you, you hear extreme, exactly what's absolutely, going on yeah. absolutely rather than trying to describe what it was but <laughs> it's going <laughs> 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 what does this mean <laughs> exactly exactly um, but i'm not saying you should put blind faith in every auto repair shop uh, make sure you get a, f a fair price except one well <laughs> no you, i mean you know check around make sure you get a fair price um, but, but, you know, as long as it's safe to drive your vehicle, you might want to ask for price quotes from a few different shops. But, but have them physically look at it mm -hmm. and, and determine, you know, if they believe it's the same thing and, and what it's going to take to, to fix it. Um, you know, anyone that gives you a price on the phone, all they're doing is guessing. And, and the other issue with that is, is make sure it includes everything because I've seen, uh, you know, estimates from, from repair shops and they don't include sales tax. I mean, that's 6%, especially, you know, I mean, if you've got an 800 or or $1,000 repair, I mean, that's a lot of money. So just shop fees. Y exactly, exactly. Just make sure it's all inclusive, uh, you know, if, if you're going to try to shop around. Um, and then number three, uh, mechanics only suggest additional services to get your money. Um, that's not true. Uh, some people will take advantage of you, but it, it's not exclusive in the auto industry. I mean, you know, we, we, we see, you know, fraud in, in the medical industry. You know, there's dishonest doctors, attorneys. Um, there might be dishonest weather people. I'm not sure. Jason's I'm not, not one, one of them, them, but I think Absolutely they exist, not. Yes. But accountants, other service professionals, I mean, it's in any industry. But, you know, don't, don't automatically assume a mechanic's out to get you. Uh, most of them are looking out for you. Uh, listen to them with an open mind. Um, you know, an easy uh, test is ask them to show you the problem. Mm -hmm. You know, if someone says, hey, you know, your, your, your car's got a loose wheel bearing, well, well, can you show it to me? I want to see what it looks like. And, and with technology nowadays, you, you don't even have to be at the shop. You know, they can, they can shoot a short, you know, like we just talked, you know, people email the sounds to us. Um, you know, we have a new software in place uh, where we can email you pictures of what we're seeing on your car along with the estimate or text them to you. Mm -hmm. uh, and the same with video. You know, they, they, that, that can be, you know, so j just ask to see it. You don't even have to be there. Sure. Do you think that's the biggest thing people don't know? Like, for me personally, I don't know how my car works. I know the basic idea. A absolutely. So if something goes wrong, I have no idea, and then I take it to a shop, and it magically goes in a back room, and I hope it gets fixed. Ex do, you, do you think that's oh, what sure. gets people yeah. with anything. a little weary? Yeah, with, with anything, because what, what you don't know is, is a fear. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you have somebody come out to work on the roof of your house, I mean, if you don't know anything about roofing, you're, you're at their mercy, and, right. and, and that does create fear, absolutely. And, and one thing that I've noticed with the, the, the new software that we have is, you know, it used to be if we, we would call you up and tell you that your car needed a serpentine belt because it has a lot of cracks in it, and, and some people would, would defer or, or elect to decline that service, um, where now we, we text or email you a picture. I mean, this is your belt. Look at all the cracks on it. Right. And, and all of a sudden, I mean, it's kind of like the proof in the pudding. Mm -hmm. I, mean, right. I mean, we're not out to get you. And, and most shops aren't. But Because you know, most just, shops have other vehicles behind yours. They want to finish the work on yours, get yours done, and move yours out so the next one can come in. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and so it isn't that they're, I mean, if yours is the only car in the parking lot, that then, tell you it might be a right warning. Well, they've, got some, they've got some really good fast technicians, I think, is what happens. But, but, but no, um, yeah, just ask to see it. I mean, with technology, that, that's easily done these days. All right. Now, if you want to check out Westside Auto Pros, what's the easiest way to find you guys? Uh, you can go to our website, westsideautopros.com. Um, or if you've got a question, you can uh, go to askroundthecarguy.com. Perfect. Um, and if you want to send me a cool little card, whether it has a tractor and a tire on it or not, 
uh, you can you can go to our website and get our address. Yeah, the cooler the car, the better chance it'll show up on the program. And if That's you right. include the the, uh, the name Great Day in your text, uh, it might show up even better. There we go. All right, there we so go. You know. Ron the car guy, thank you, sir. Thank You're welcome. Great job as always. We'll be right back. Totally serious news coming up next. In